Chautauqua. Hello everyone, my name is Sandra Trevino, pronouns are she and they. I'm an artist, activist, and lifelong resident of Brownsville, Texas. First of all, I want to wish Brownsville a very happy 170th birthday. All right, let's go. And for a gift this year, I would love to see Mayor Trey Mendez investigated for his abuse of power against local resident and activist Rebecca Hinojosa. It's disappointing to see how many of our local officials have become spaced out sellouts, continuing to support the destruction that SpaceX has brought and continues to bring to Boca Chica, Brownsville, and the Rio Grande Valley as a whole. You all idolize this narcissist billionaire Elon Musk and his unethical business practices. And when we the people mention this behavior, you all are so quick to present yourselves as victims instead of listening to our concerns. For example, our tremendously ridiculous excuse for a mayor has had the audacity to announce he is not seeking re-election because of the quote, heavy toll on his physical, mental, and financial health that few can relate to. Let's turn our attention to the toll he has taken on Rebecca Hinojosa. Last February, he attacked Rebecca, accusing her of allegedly spray painting graffiti over his $10,000 shrine to a soulless Brownsville future. And he made sure everyone knew that his allegation was based in his opposition to the incredible work she has done as an advocate for our environment and against corporate greed. He had police officers invade her home and take her for investigation. She had no time to get dressed. She had her prescription glasses taken away from her and she was held for 26 hours. He posted her mugshot and shared her employment history on his official campaign Facebook page to ruin her chances of returning to work and making a living. Mendes presented Becca as public enemy number one, targeting her in a way he has never targeted anyone else online because he wanted to send everyone a message. If you disagree with him, if you even think about shattering the illusion he is trying so hard to push, this lie that Brownsville is okay with adopting some bland corporate image over our rich cultural history, he will do whatever he can to silence you. And then he'll post about you on social media to make himself look good. Now, I wasn't able to find a green shirt for the occasion, but rest assured, I'm here to support Becca. And as you can see, I'm not the only one here to support this amazing person and accomplished activist. Becca cares deeply about our environment and the safety of those who live here. Many of the people you see today, many of the people who might go up to speak, have had the opportunity to connect with her, to work alongside her, and to learn from her. While our local officials are taking selfies with rockets and Teslas and business people who are looking to make a quick buck by exploiting our area, Becca has earned the love and support of a community. And we will always show up to speak against injustices committed against a fellow resident. Rebecca Hinojosa should not be punished to satisfy this man's ego. The charges filed against Rebecca Hinojosa must be dropped. And Trey Menso, I mean, Trey Mendez should be investigated for his abuse of power. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Nancy Guevara, and I've been working here in Brownsville for about seven years. I've been working actively in the community as an artist and an activist, and I've known Becca Hinojosa since I moved here. In these last seven years, I've worked to create more community arts infrastructure and programming in Brownsville. I have received national support from the National Endowment for the Arts, Art Place America, A Blade of Grass, NALAC, and the Ford Foundation and the New York Foundation for the Arts. Since I think sometimes local officials try to kind of discredit us, right? I'm an educated woman from a low-income Mexican immigrant household that went to UT Austin, Harvard, and is a Fulbright scholar. So my voice should count. And I, I need my voice to count here. I know Becca Hinojosa for seven years. I know that she works tirelessly. I know because I've worked alongside her. And all she's trying to do is protect the environment, protect our environment, make sure that our water stays clean, make sure that our air stays, stays clean. We're working tirelessly to defend the rights of this community, of this immigrant community. You need to hear our voices, you do. You need to hear them. 
These are educated people speaking out every day, trying to protect our environment. We are scared of losing Boca Chica. We are already losing Boca Chica. Think of all the history, all the years, all the families that have memories there. SpaceX is not economic progress, it's not. I'm telling you, I'm an educated citizen here. I've grown up in on the border, on the Texas border, and I'm gonna continue along with Becca to fight for the Texas border. It's not progress, it's not. We need to start defending low-income people not corporations like SpaceX and LNG. That's not progress. The loss of our biodiversity and wildlife means the worst quality of life for all of us. I support Becca. She is fighting for what is right. I demand the city of Brownsville to drop the charge against Becca Hinojosa and to investigate Mayor Mendez. There has been an abuse of power here. There has been. And we're tired and we're going to keep fighting. Thank you we're very much for your fighting. comments. Next, we have Jose Jimenez. In the Communist Manifesto, Marx and Engels accurately describe the modern state under capitalism as nothing but an executive committee which handles the affairs of the whole bourgeoisie. That means that the state or the ruling body of government using the police, the courts, and other institutions under its belt, such as school, media, um, and other NGOs, represses or oppresses the workers, the homeless, or mitigates friction and dissonance between the people suffering and the exploitation on behalf of the capitalist bosses and landlords. Nothing proves this more than the hostile arrest of Becca Hinojosa and the subsequent humiliation inflicted on her by the mayor in February of last year. We all know the story by now. $20,000 mural was uh, defaced. The city, mayor, police, and surrounding local capitalists blamed Becca for the act due to utilization of her First Amendment rights in the past, i.e. her activism and her community work. Whether Mendez did in fact personally request her arrest or not, the fact of the matter remains. Four officers showed up at Becca's apartment early in the morning while she still had her PJs on, failing to show a warrant and unethically barging in her door, forcing her to the police station with no shoes on and without her seeing glasses, and offer a Class B misdemeanor, a graffiti tag, a mere act of vandalization for which evidence alleging her has yet to be submitted by them. As mentioned in ThroughChargeOfE.com, uh, in an article in last year, the mayor is setting precedents with this act of aggression and intimidation. The mayor, we're already intimidated. We're intimidated by the rising cost of goods and housing, by the threat of homelessness, by the threat of starvation, by the threat of sickness and disease. We're threatened by the threat of, we're intimidated by the threat of the ongoing border militarization and now by our very own local commission and police. How are we supposed to believe that our government's words, liberty, justice, and equality for all, when indeed the opposite is true? Your petty attempts at intimidation only adds fuel to the struggle, one you're on the losing side of. The people voted for y'all, but since money equals people now, and it's pretty self-explanatory who you serve, that and the fact all of you on the commission are either petit bourgeois and or landlords, you have to keep your class interests aligned and with the same money that put you up there. Under the hypocritical conditions of bourgeois liberal democracy, we cannot trust those in power to hold themselves accountable. That's why we, the people of Brownsville, demand an investigation into the mayor's abuse of power, the police's compliance and brutality, and the silent but rich minority of capitalists and landlords involved in the matter. In addition, we demand it not be another city or county department, nor the Texas Rangers, but an independent and impartial committee of residents and workers be organized to assess the matter. However, most importantly though, we ask that you, in unison with the district attorney, dismiss the charges brought against Becca and offer reparations for the abuse and assault she endured. It's been a year since the alleged tagging and nothing of material or grand substance has occurred, has it, Mayor? Was your doxing meant to warn others, uh, leading to a waste of municipal resources and tax dollars, or was it to stroke your overinflated but fragile eagle? Or was it for Daddy Musk? Rebecca.
Hi there, my name is Emma Guevara and I'm a lifelong resident of Bronzeville, Texas. I'm also one of Mayor Mendez's neighbors, so we're not all from out of town. I'm here today to address the commission about the silencing of activists and the infringements on freedom of speech by the mayor, the local police, and in a larger sense, the conspiracy orchestrated by these entities to harass and bully at will. On February 16th, 2022, local environmental activist, Brownsville community member, and my fellow colleague and friend, Becca Hinojosa, was violently arrested by the Brownsville Police Department for allegedly defacing a mural. This mural was commissioned by the city of Brownsville using money that came from a donation from the Musk Foundation, a charity nonprofit owned by Elon Musk. The bottom portion of the mural was defaced with the phrase gentrified stop SpaceX and was promptly covered up by the next morning. A quick fix that was not awarded to other defaced art in the city, such as the Bloom Where You Are Planted mural, painted by local artist Josue Ramirez, or the George Floyd mural that was painted on, at the old graffiti park even after it was defaced multiple times during the Black Lives Matter movement of 2020. To make it even clearer that loyalty lies with money and not with people, our own mayor responded to this incredibly inappropriate and unjust arrest with a similarly incredibly inappropriate and triumphant public Facebook post that proceeded to dox Becca's full government name, mugshot, and workplace title that he found on LinkedIn. It's interesting that this alleged crime Mayor Mendes chose to post about on his own Facebook was a Class B misdemeanor, which is frankly debatable because I can't see how a few swipes of Pepto-Bismol pink can cost over $100. But on January 28th of the same year, Daniel Molstad, a former Brownsville Children's Museum employee, was arrested for possessing and distributing child sexual assault material. And Mayor Mendes did not make a post about it until after he posted about Becca while Daniel Molstad was out on bail. You could argue that he was waiting until he was proven guilty, but why would he give a child predator that respect instead of a community activist? Or perhaps because Daniel is the Mitty Foundation's executive director's son, and the mayor doesn't want to ruffle any feathers with the local ruling class. The conspiracy theory that the police in chief at the behest of the mayor collaborated to have Becca arrested for such a petty crime is seeming more like a conspiracy fact. Becca has been a strong and outspoken voice against the destructive impact SpaceX has had on our environment and city as a whole. And of course, those at the top who reap the most benefits would be SpaceX's most ardent supporters. But Becca makes sure to keep the voices of those who are the most directly impacted at the forefront, supporting community members across the lower Rio Grande Valley, centering work done by the Carrizo Come Crudo tribe of Texas, the original people of this land, and always making sure to advocate first and foremost for the people who live here. Today, you've received a petition signed by over 1,700 people who are all in agreement that Becca's charges should be dropped and Mayor Mendes should be investigated. We implore you all to write a letter to District Attorney Luis V. Sainz to drop Becca's charges, investigate Mayor Mendes, and do what you were elected for and listen to the people. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Stapleton Barrera, and I am Ms. Becca Hinojosa's criminal defense attorney. Uh, and I'm here in that capacity, but I'm also here in the capacity as an ally, okay? Um, and as you know, Becca here has been charged with this class B misdemeanor, uh, the city of Brownsville being the complainant on that paperwork. And we're here to ask, that instead of pushing for prosecution of your constituents, you work and instead of ignoring your constituents, you listen to them and try to find some sort of common ground because we know that there is somewhere if we try. And we ask, instead of embarrassing on social media, uh, we try to empower and give people a voice. That's the kind of Brownsville that we all deserve. But that's not quite what we have right now. We have this environment where people are frustrated and people are, are lashing out because they're just not feeling heard. Now, as for the arrest of Ms. Becca Hinojosa, we are confident that the evidence is just simply not there to convict this Lebanon young lady. It's not there. Um, for strategic trial reasons, I won't go into details. But I will say this, um, there are aspects of the investigation that are highly problematic. And we would urge that when these are brought to light, which they will be if we 
proceed to jury trial and we will if this is not dropped because I guarantee you that Miss Becca Hinojosa is not pleading guilty to anything. And what these things that these problematic issues that will be brought to light, what they will do is they will bring shame upon our city. They will bring shame upon our commission. They will bring shame upon BPD and they will bring shame upon the district attorney's office. Now, you know, on this issue of shame, this this idea of the social media shaming and posting people's mugshots on the internet, right? States all over the US are enacting laws that prohibit specifically this. Lawmakers saying that the purpose of this is not to um, there's no public safety purpose behind this. It doesn't help anybody. All it does is shame. And it stigmatizes the person that's been arrested, whether it's valid or not. You've got coerced photos, often at a moment of crisis, embarrassment and despair. And this affixes guilt to a person before they've even gone through the, the due process. So I'd urge us at this point to have a little class and, and, and stop with it. You single-handedly have the power to stop this prosecution. All you got to do is pick up those phones. I'd urge you to do the right thing. Hello, my name is Rebecca Hinojosa. I'm a resident of Brownsville, multi-generational from the Rio Grande Valley. I'm here to deliver um, over 1,700 petitions, um, 1,700 petitions demanding that the city of Brownsville, in conjunction with the district attorney's office, immediately drop the Class B misdemeanor charge against me because I was subjected to a politically motivated arrest. These petitions are also calling for an investigation into Mayor Mendez for abuse of power. So we're going to hand deliver these petitions to you. Should we hand them to your uh, secretary? I expect that you all read each and every petition. On the morning of Wednesday, February 16th, 2022, two cars of Brownsville police broke into my apartment. Without allowing me to properly dress and without providing a warrant, they arrested me, took away my prescription eyeglasses, subjected me to interrogation without a lawyer, and held me in jail for over 26 hours, all based on a single alleged charge of Class B misdemeanor graffiti. Immediately after my release, and apparently in conjunction, in coordination with city jail officials, the mayor of Brownsville, Trey Mendez, singled out and publicly attacked me by publishing a photo of me from the Brownsville Police Department in a post on his official Facebook page, setting me up for criticism and potential harm for his constituents. He also included the name of my employer in an attempt to harm my ability to make a living. Notably, Mayor Mendez has never treated anyone else in this way on his official Facebook page. Mayor Mendez made clear that he was lashing out since I am quoted in anti-SpaceX articles because of my community-engaged work speaking out against the destructive impact that SpaceX is causing in the Valley's environment and community and because of a small message that had been painted below the controversial BTX mural paid for by Elon Musk in downtown Brownsville to the effect of gentrified stop SpaceX. By the morning of February, Friday, February 18th, the graffiti at the bottom of the mural was covered up. After receiving backlash from the community, Mayor Trey Mendez has since edited his original post, but the damage is done. I have experienced significant trauma and harm as a result of his actions. The city of Brownsville should not allow reckless endangerment of its residents by its highest elected official. An immediate investigation should begin with consequences and repercussions due to Mayor Mendez's actions. Thank you. Hey, I blame my water for this. You know, I always keep panic. My name is Stan Delon. And uh, Juan Benito Mancias is my colonized name. We were first colonized by the Spanish-speaking people and by the English-speaking people. We still have our language. Our language was recorded in 1886. The 170 years of Brownsville, Brownsville, where's your history? 
go anywhere, you find nothing but Elon Musk stuff. He's erasing your history. The history of this city, the history of this county, and you're allowing it. That's their, that's their technique of getting rid of the culture, getting rid of values, getting rid of traditions and teachings. They are looting and they are pillaging the sites that are out there. And when somebody like Beca Hinojosa stands up to protect that what is there, he's not protesting. He's protesting the, he's protecting the rights of who we are. I am not a protester, I'm not an activist, I'm a protector of our land. And I'll continue to fight for those lands. And I'll continue to protect those lands because people like Beca Hinojosa are strong enough to stand up to I want to say power, but it's giving you too much too, too, too much credit. And the thing is that when you become them, when you become the colonizer, then you're just another plantation owner, or you're part of the, the house slaves of the plantation owner. The encomiendas, the encomenderos, the congreras that were here before. We were the first slaves here. And they're still treating us like slaves. We refuse to be intimidated by these tactics militarization by someone who doesn't even understand or have any cultural values. Americans don't have values, they have ideals because they change every 10 years with your 10 year plans. And I think it's time that we recognize the fact that we are here and we're never gonna go anywhere. We've always been here. The thing is that you have to listen to us too. We have a marketing plan. Are you listening to our marketing plan? No. You, 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 push us away and that's racism in a way that's tribal erasure that's an ongoing genocide that is going on here. for 500 years 500 years 530 years ago they came here, those people came here and they took the resources from these lands and took them over over there 530 years now they're still doing the same thing they're contaminating the soil the sacred side of our creation story Boca Chica is where our people were born and there are birthing rites that took place at that place. These are fishing villages that are still exist there. And all of this stuff is being stolen and taken. Look up Porcion 38, 39, and 41. And you will see what it tells you there, that you can't build anything out there without our permission. And nobody's ever tried to talk to us, so you already go against NACPRA. You're already going against the American Indian Religious Freedom Act. The same acts that people are writing to protect who we are. And I don't need recognition from any of anybody, but I was gonna ask for a proclamation, but that's all right, I don't need it. I know who I am, and I know who my people are. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Macias. My name is Christopher Basaldu. I'm a Brownsville resident, I grew up here. And I'm also a member of the Carizo Come Crudo tribe and descended from the original people of this land who lived here since this land has existed. And we are the people of the land. As Brownsville celebrates its 170th year, imagine that your ancestors have lived in this land for 50,000 years as our people have. We were here before Brownsville. We were here before SpaceX. We were here before LNG terminals. And we were here before the United States, we were here before Texas, we were here before Elon Musk, and we were here before Trey Mendez. The city of Brownsville intimidated, harassed, abused, and intimidated a local community activist and organizer whose only wish is to have environmental justice in the Rio Grande Valley. She works alongside indigenous people, people of color, she works alongside people who are poor and people who are deliberately silenced by the levers of power, including the city of Brownsville, including the powers, the colonial powers that would abuse poor and marginalized people. Mayor Mendez and the city of Brownsville and the police department are among those abusers and oppressors. Akeino Hosa was wrongfully arrested on an alleged charge, an alleged tra Class B misdemeanor graffiti charge that to my knowledge has never been prosecuted in the history of Brownsville. So why would Brownsville PD and the district attorney start now? 
and then Tremendez bragged about it publicly on his public social uh, social media accounts, trying to intimidate somebody who has the courage to stand up and speak for the environment, speak for a clean environment, a future where we live together in a clean area, not sacrificed to the poisons of liquid natural gas, natural gas, to pipelines, and to SpaceX, and the pollution that they're putting out there on the beautiful public beaches of Boca Chica and in wildlife refuges. Trey Mendes was sending a signal that anybody who stands up with courage to dissent against corporate extraction will be silenced and intimidated and harassed and abused by police. So I'm inviting the city of Brownsville to write a letter to Luis Sainz, the district attorney, and ask him politely to drop the charges against Becca Hinojosa. I also invite the city council to open an investigation on Trey Mendez for the abuse of power. And this is also Thank something you. that we're asking as the original indigenous people of this land that existed here before the city of Brownsville. I am a bias. Day by the film industry, excuse me, and on television in movie reruns, and also with recent happenings at Wounded Knee. We've taken the land which is rightfully ours. Years from now, my people will be forced to live in mobile homes and reservations. Your people will wear cardigans and drink highballs. We will sell our bracelets by the roadsides. You will play golf and enjoy hot hors d'oeuvres. My people will have pain and degradation. Your people will have stick shifts. The gods of my tribe have spoken. They have said, do not trust the pilgrims. And for all these reasons, I've decided to stop you. Burn your village to the ground. 
and everything is being ruined. They don't care about people living on that land. So a religious disaster, it's something, it's, it's like genocide is something for Indian people. So. Hundreds of indigenous women murdered or missing in Canada. A haunting national disgrace with no solution in sight. How long has there been no water where you live? For years. And all the springs, the spring water, they're, they're dried out. Sometimes they have to kill us. They have to kill us. Because they can't break our spirit. Hi, I'm Patrick Everett from the Cheers Podcast. For this episode, I wanted to learn more about the history of the environmental resistance movement in the so-called Rio Grande Valley. To help me with this, I'm joined by Becca Hinojosa, a local environmental activist that has sacrificed so much in this resistance to protect our local ecology and return the lands back into native hands. Welcome, Becca. Becca. Uh, please introduce yourself to the audience to let them know more about you. Sure. Thanks for having me, Patrick. Uh, my name is Becca Inhosa. My pronouns are she, her. Uh, I live in Brownsville, and I'm multi-generational from the Rio Grande Valley, born and raised in the RGV. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many community members and, um, you know, organizations that have been speaking out about environmental justice issues in the Rio Grande Valley for years, so I'm happy to share um, some of the history I'm I know about. That's great. I, I'm I can't wait. Um, I know that you've been in it uh, for a while and a different perspective than I am, and I I'm really interested of hear hearing it from your side and what you know. Becca faced intimidation from the Brownsville police for her resistance against SpaceX harmful impacts to the wetlands. They did a show of force at her residence, all for a Class B misdemeanor. This was for allegedly spray painting on an Elon Musk funded mural with the tag Gentrified. Stop SpaceX. This is a clear threat to her, but especially others resisting the continued colonization of this area. In a revealing but politically stupid dogpile, the soon to be former mayor, Trey Mendes, blasted her mugshot and information on his Facebook. I guess the pressure of trying to futilely reconcile class antagonisms as a liberal moderator for their oppressor against their press is too much for one's mental health. I get it. It's easier to be a small capitalist exploiting the labor and progressive aesthetics instead of being the oppressor's spokesman. That said, I invited Becca on the show to learn more from her experience regarding two fronts, the proposed liquefied natural gas export facilities and SpaceX. I have discussed the LNG project with Patrick Anderson, a local teacher and environmental activist, in the sustainable development episode and give my take about the facilities in the development towards non attainment episode, as well as 12 other local individuals that submitted comments. During the time I was focusing on LNG on the podcast, SpaceX was already in town and their public reception during the public hearings was the opposite of LNG. Before LNG was proposed in 2012, I went to one of the public hearings for SpaceX, and you can see the port director, the, re the director of the Sioux, and other members of their oppressor class and their press class expressing general support and hope. I want to start around this point. Specifically, what was the history of the local environmental movement in the RGV before the arrival of SpaceX? Uh, and I know, when I ask about history, we could start in 1836 when the border was beginning to be fascistically solidified or the so-called Secure Fence Act of 2006. But those two starting points could be covered in other episodes. Let's, be, let's start before the arrival of SpaceX, and we'll end with the LNG projects, the construction you can now see from the road, and the protests they have received. Tell this story as you know it. Um, sure, I'm happy to share a little bit about um, some of the organizing history in the Valley. Um, you know, around the SpaceX issue and the LNG issue. Um, yeah, I mean, there are community members who have been speaking out against LNG and SpaceX for, for almost 10 years now. And um, 
know, there are folks in the Laguna Madre who, you know, got together and, um, you know, pressured their elected officials and their on their city commissions to pass anti LNG resolutions against projects. Um, and so, you know, there are all the communities in the Laguna Madre have made it abundantly clear that they don't want LNG, um, you know, behind the HEB in Port Isabel. Um, and so those communities that have passed anti-LNG resolutions are of Padre Island, um, you know, Long Island Village, Laguna Vista, um, Port Isabel, and even the Laguna Madre Water District said that they wouldn't give water to the LNG facilities. So you know, there, there is very clear opposition to these projects, and these communities in the valley have made it clear that these projects would completely you know, change their way of life for, for the worse. You know, we're not... Uh, our coastline in, in the Rio Grande Valley doesn't look like the coastlines in Corpus or Houston... You know, we don't have mass massive fossil fuel industry and um, we don't have, you know, like in those communities, they have cancer clusters that have been clearly associated with bad air pollution or toxic emissions. Um, we don't have a long history of that in on our coastline. And so that's what people here are pushing back, um, you know, to stop the build out of the fossil fuel industry. Um, and there's this bigger issue here of, um, you know, stopping the industrialization of our coastline. And that also includes, uh, SpaceX operations. You referenced the local environmental movements. They have been passing proposals in the, in their local, uh, municipalities, um, Laguna, uh, Vista, as well as, uh, Port Isabel. Uh, I believe there's also been uh, tax abatements that have been uh, delayed as well as uh, resisted by these groups uh, along uh, along with you and others. Um, yeah, I mean, community organizations like Friends of Laguna Madre, Save RGV, um, the Garisco Comocudo Tribe, residents all along in Cameron County, you know, have, have successfully pressured um, the Point Isabel School District to reject tax subsidies, tax breaks for, you know, all three proposed LNG facilities, Anova LNG, Texas LNG, and Rio Grande LNG. And because of, you know, just the continuous sustained opposition to LNG in the Valley, um, you know, we've, we've actually stopped three, um, you know, stop some of these LNG facilities. So originally there were five proposed mm -hmm. LNG facilities that had plans to build at the Port of Brownsville, and now we're down to two projects. So two of them gave up really early on, and then one project, Anova LNG, canceled, um, you know, very recently. And so the two projects that we're still fighting are Rio Grande LNG and Texas LNG. And what I mean by fighting these projects is, you know, preventing, trying to prevent them from getting tax subsidies, which we successfully stopped the school district. But unfortunately, Cameron County um, gave massive tax break to the Rio Grande LNG project. Um, we've also, you know, legally challenged these projects in court, and we had a major lawsuit victory that is actually forcing the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to have to re-review the permit authorizations for Rio Grande LNG and Texas LNG. Um, we've also been working internationally with communities in, in Europe to stop the export of this gas. So these facilities, Rio Grande LNG and Texas LNG, are planning to uh, take in gas that's fracked from Texas and then liquefy it um, using a chemical process And then they need to liquefy the gas in order to store large quantities of it on ships. And then ultimately this gas is just all going to be exported. So this gas is not for, for the valley. It's not for, for people in Texas. Um, 
they're ex- these companies want to export gas um, at these gas plants in order to, um, you know, they're their own profit. Yeah. And in fact, exporting gas um, in an LNG facility causes gas prices to go up in Texas. Um, you know, so this is, uh, you know, this is going to hurt, hurt, you know, low-income families <laughs> who yeah. already have to pay really high bills. Um, and so it's just a classic example of, you know, we would get the pollution, the Valley would have to deal with the pollution of these LNG facilities if they move forward, while big companies that, you know, own Rio Grande LNG and Texas LNG would just end up profiting. Yeah. And then we would pay more. Um, you know, so communities are actively continuing to speak out about you know, the toxic emissions that would come from these facilities, the fact that it would, you know, deal with giving tax breaks to the fossil fuel industry. Um, and then, you know, just that these are facilities are an example of the ongoing colonization of our region. And what I mean by that is the Carrizo Comocudo tribe of Texas, who are the original native people from the Rio Grande Valley, from this region, um, you know, these lands are sacred to them. The lands where SpaceX is operating is, is sacred to them. They have sacred sites there. Um, you know, where Rio Grande LNG and Texas LNG want to build, there are no sacred, uh, the sacred site there um, called Garcia Pasture, which is actually in the National Park Service's Registry of Historic Places. Um, Garcia Pasture, that sacred site, is also um, has also been recognized by the World Monuments Fund for being a very important site uh, to protect. And so these LNG facilities, you know, not only do they threaten our health, but they also threaten uh, the history of, of the original people of this of this community. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, and to speak on the continual colonization as well, like the, the mechanism that you just uh, mentioned, how we're not, the people in this area are not going to enjoy the extra supply of natural gas that would reduce the prices for us. It's getting exported to other markets, particularly Europe and Asia. But uh, that's uh, another component. I remember in, uh, I'm Irish, and so there's uh, Irish history of colonization as well when it comes to the British and the, and the Irish. And they did the same thing during the famine when it came to food stuff or cattle. Like That was still, again, exported and uh, grown in, uh, and raised in Ireland, but again, exported to Britain during the famine. And so the local po- population wasn't able to even enjoy their own natural resources. And so that adds on to the colonization. They just come here to develop privatize the profits and then everyone else gets the the socialized cost of the pollution as well as the economic increased prices of energy we're not going to enjoy the extra supply so we keep the current prices the way they are which are high right now and it's contributing to the colonization as well with the housing prices so people getting pushed out yeah, yeah and this adds yeah. to more of this this is a whole like dynamic that's going on and you could add more to it so there's this issue here of, you know, continued European colonization, too. Um, you know, Rio Grande LNG and Texas LNG, they're trying to import their gas to, to Europe. Rio Grande LNG has um, a contract to export gas to France. And France, the country of France, has actually banned fracking. Mm-hmm. The country there is aware of just how dangerous fracking is. And yet, they're planning to import fracked gas from Texas, um, you know, from from facilities that would try to that want to build on sacred lands and sacred sites of the Carrizo Comocudo tribe of Texas. So there's just this very ob- also very obvious, <laughs> you know, history here of, of European colonization, and this is just ongoing. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have the soldiers here anymore, but they have the financial backings and the and the institutions that push these uh, projects forward. Um, yeah, it's a continuation of the European colonization, and that's the reason why I brought you on to kind of 
educate all of us, uh, particularly the history, so we could have our own history and speak our own history and don't let them uh, dictate what history is in their terms. Um, like history is always written by the victors and we want to make sure that we always have our history uh, documented and so we could always revert back to it and understand how we could move forward and, and uh, decolonize this area and recognize that it's just a continue the same process just in new forms and new conditions and uh, and the resistance is still continuing continuing so uh, with that uh, I want to ask you a, a specific question when it came to any proposed meeting with Elon Musk uh, if there was any proposed meeting uh, has he responded um you know, I, I don't think Elon Musk talks to the news media. Um, I haven't seen any, read any news quotes um, from SpaceX's PR officials or um, you know, haven't really, haven't read any comments from Elon Musk about, um, you know, the concerns and the opposition from the community. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have, let me know. Um <laughs> But I read, a, I see a lot of news articles where, you know, it's about rising costs of housing in the valley or, like, you know, birds being killed or the wildlife refuge burning down. And I read these articles and then it says SpaceX declined to comment or no comment from, no comment from SpaceX. Yeah. Um, yeah, the last time I saw him comment on the area here, he basically said that no one is around the area and so he could blow up whatever you wanted out there and no one would care. So I think that was, yeah, people, people were pissed. Yeah. I think that was the last time he referred to this area and that's, that's pretty much it. He hasn't really commented uh, about anything else since then, uh, regarding the people here as well as the land. I want to move on to, well, continue with the colonization. This is something that's uh, part of, uh, my analysis. I always have a anti-imperialist and anti-war analysis, uh, when I look at environmental issues, because, a lot of wars, imperialist wars, are maintained and also caused by, caused by trying to have dominance over certain regions where have rich uh, concentrations of natural resources, lithium, oil, natural gas, you name it, whatever it's a, a, a basic necessity to run the current industrialized civilizations that we have global, globally. Uh, right now, there's a continuous... Uh, battle of trying to get those resources, especially with the current setup of our system. So uh, I, with the U.S. now being the world's largest exporter of LNG, beating Qatar, Qatar being second now, uh, SpaceX is also a uh, U.S. contractor, basically selling uh, military equipment that has been used in Ukraine, um, the Starlink system per, uh, particularly, as well as other spy satellites that he has contracts with the U.S. government uh, to shoot up into, into space for uh, espionage and, and other uh, military uh, related uh, operations but basically most of the money that he receives is from the government uh, to do these operations and so when i see these things the uh, the largest exporter of uh, lng a natural gas uh, or a, a natural resource that's very uh, highly needed um, and as well as a military contractor um, here locally just by our, um, down the road from us these two are main arteries to the empire and so do you think that being anti-LNG and anti-SpaceX is also a part of the anti-war and anti-imperialist movement here in the, in the United States um, I mean it, it's all connected right um, the Iraq war was you know a war over largely a war over oil <laughs> And, um, you know, we're seeing the, the Russian war with Ukraine. Um, we're seeing energy companies kind of use that as a talking point to try to further um, the export of uh, oil and gas, you know, from the U.S. Um, so we're, you know, actively having to, you know, explain to um financial institutions, the banks, the elected officials, the community members, that, you know, it takes uh, years to build an LNG facility. And, 
you know, this idea that LNG is freedom gas that'll lessen their, you know, European dependence on, on Russia. I mean, it takes years to build an LNG facility and fast tracking approvals for LNG projects would not immediately export gas to Europe. You know, all it would do is continue to sacrifice Gulf Coast communities, sacrifice our communities to, you know, for a polluting industry. Um, you know, so, you know, we've also read testimonies from your Ukrainian activists saying that they you know, want to see, um, you know, countries in Europe move away from fossil fuels and invest in, you know, efficiency and invest in, you know, clean energy for their communities. Um, they don't want to see see this war being used to drive more fossil fuel exports, which is terrible for, the, for climate change, terrible for the climate crisis. And, you know, right now our country's communities need to be using our time, uh, resources, and our, our own personal energy to, to transition away. Um, you know, we don't want to see, you know, communities get locked into, you know, more fracking and more uh, LNG and gas facilities because of, a, um, because, you know, that they're pushing this war. Yeah. Um, one uh, aspect of the war, I I see, and you might disagree with me with this one, but uh, the the way I kind of see it is that the United States um, has a history of uh, intervention in a lot of people's in, uh, internal politics, and there's been a, a littered history of uh, the U.S. in, um, in the eastern part of uh, Europe, particularly in Ukraine. Um, I won't go into the deep history of it, but I will go just up to 2014, and then that's it. Um, in that moment, there was a, a intervention that the U.S. did that was able to squeeze itself in there and get a government that was for it, for its interests that got a president that was anti-war. Uh, and now he ended up, once he gained power, became a proponent for the war and continued it. And that was a form of geopolitics that I won't go into uh, for this episode, but pretty much uh, to sum up, the analysis will be a deindustrialization of Europe uh, using natural gas as a uh, a wedge is issue, uh, basically a, uh, a pressure point to force the Europeans to purchase the, the higher price LNG from the U.S. instead of the cheaper pipeline gas coming from Russia. And our talking heads in the media would be saying, like, trying to get Ukraine uh, not dependent on Russian oil as well as Europe, uh, trying to push whole, uh, our Europe to uh, sanction uh, Russian gas, causing it to increase in price, but also decoupling from Eurasian uh, integration. And so they're basically putting a wedge, a, a wall between Europe and Asia. And Ukraine is particularly uh, being used as other locations around the world when it comes to U.S. imperialism, it's being used to fight a, a proxy war against Russia. Um, but uh, that whole geopolitical imperialist war is triggering uh, a cascade of uh, events as well as effects. And we're at one node of it, which is here in the Rio Grande Valley with SpaceX as well as LNG. Uh, and there, I've seen a, a recent letter that uh, I believe is RGV LNG, uh, Rio Grande Valley LNG, that was basically trying to tell uh, FERC, the Federal Agency Regulatory Commission, to basically hurry up so they could uh, initiate the contract that they have they have with the European uh, with Europe. Um, that's uh, my take on that. I know you, uh, maybe you have something to say about that or. Uh, I don't know what you want to add to that, but uh, what do you think? I mean, we're going to continue yelling at FERC, making it clear that Rio Grande LNG and Texas LNG cannot be built. We communities do not want these projects. 
in, in, in any, any way. And, um, you know, we do not want these facilities um, to, um, you know, these facilities are not a solution to um, the war. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's devastating. Yeah. Like, you see the arms dealers, uh, they're making profits right now, and all their weapons are just blowing up on the ground and causing more environmental damage over there in Ukraine. The Ukrainians are being used and as ca- cannon fodder, basically, and they're dying for what they believe is uh, what's right for them. But at the same time, they're dying. And so there's a lot of harm. There's a lot of uh, innocent lives that are happening, uh, that are uh, being killed because of this uh, ongoing uh, war. And then over here, they're trying to accelerate, well, tell the FERC to hurry up to build these uh, export facilities so they can hurry up and give Europe its uh, highly needed uh, gas that's really expensive for them. For them, their inflation is much worse than us, but they're experiencing energy prices that are much worse, much higher. And so they're very desperate to get these facilities up and going. Like you said, it's going to take a while to get them onboarded these facilities don't just turn on uh, automatically. It takes time to build it, and there's this ongoing resistance here locally. And I really appreciate all that uh, resistance that's going on from everyone that's involved, uh, including yourself, because as uh, time goes on, I think time is really on our side uh, on this uh, um, resistance, uh, as long as uh, there's still resistance movement here and there's uh, the motions of... Uh, everything else stays the same i feel like the, um, we prevail in the long term I, th- I think the the empire is kind of losing its uh extra markets around the world to f- exploit and it's getting uh, stuck at, at its location its size it, it has right now and so as long as uh, there's a barrier to the the building of this infrastructure to meet that demand in europe um it I think the contradictions were intensified, but there's going to be a qualitative change uh, from all this uh, resistance that's going on locally. Yeah, I mean, we're going to, communities have been speaking out for you know over eight years. We'll continue to do that. Right now is the critical moment where, you know, concerned residents, people that are opposed to the LNG projects need to send public comment to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission tell the regulators they don't want these projects to move forward, that their permits must be canceled. And this is also the critical moment. Um, We're pressuring banks not to finance these LNG facilities. You know, they need millions and millions and millions of dollars. Um, They need capital to build these gas plants. And, you know, we've successfully gotten one bank to walk away from Texas LNG in the Valley. And, you know, now we're actively meeting with bank officials, giving them petitions, sending them letters, protesting outside their offices to stay away from these LNG projects um, so that they're not built. And we, I have uh, some online petitions that you can share. We are planning a protest to deliver them in a few weeks um, to these uh, bank offices. So um, and what I mean by now is the critical time is that, you know, right now they're going through that. These LNG projects are going through a, re- a re-review with the regulator. Um, they're actively trying to get, you know, more capital. They're actively trying to get contracts to export the gas. Um, so right now is that critical moment where, you know, we need to, Give it all we've, all we've got to try to stop these projects. And where can uh, people find that, uh, how to do that? Yeah, I can send you the links if you want to include them. Okay. Yeah, I, I put them in the show notes then. And for the ones who want to do more, like, for example, show up to these places or help out a little bit more if, uh, if uh, they're able and willing, uh, how can they help? Yeah, they should definitely sign those petitions and click that, you know, that you allow us to reach out to you. Um, there's a little box that they can check. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we'll we'll do our best to text 
message people and give them updates or send them an email update. Like, we're planning to text people next week to bring them out to a protest in Houston. Um, and, you know, we'll send email updates and let them know how to send comments to regulatory agencies. Um, yeah, please fill out the petition, and that's how we'll get your contact information. Okay. That's good. What can we do to help out the Carrizo Comurcuro Nation uh, get recognized so that they can reclaim and protect their lands? Yeah, I mean, they should definitely reach out to the Carrizo Comurcuro tribe on Instagram or Facebook. Um, you know, please donate to the Carrizo Comurcuro tribe. Um, you know, support their efforts to save sacred lands and sacred sites and protect their life ways. Um, I can send you those links. You can include them, Patrick. Okay. Um, yeah, and um, if you, if folks want, you know, updates on social media, they can also go to Another Gulf is Possible on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And we post, Another Gulf is Possible posts a lot of updates about, you know, SpaceX issues, in the valley and actions um, to stop the expansion of SpaceX, and also some petitions um, and some updates about the LNG site. Um, and, you know, I mentioned, you know, follow Another Gulf is Possible pages, follow the Garizo Komofudo Tribes pages. Um, we're actually all part of a network called South Texas Environmental Justice Network, um, you know, working together to you know, get some updates out to the community and let them bring them in to ways that they can take action and make their voices heard about these environmental justice issues in the Valley. Great. Awesome. Yeah. That's a good place. So people could find where you, uh, your work is located, uh, regarding protecting the environment. So I really appreciate all that. Um, thank you, uh, Becca and Hosa for, uh, all that you do, especially, th uh, protecting the environment and caring for this community. I appreciate the time that you took uh, out of your schedule to talk to me about these historical struggles. Uh, thank you for all your work. Yeah, thank you too, Patrick. And, you know, we all have to keep speaking up, everyone. <laughs> yeah, it, it, takes it all everyone. matters and it all counts. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, oh, thank you. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review the podcast to let others know. Share it on social media with your friends and family. If you want to hear more episodes like this, subscribe today for more important discussions and stories from the so-called Rio Grande Valley. Until next time, take care. Salud. Slancha. Cheers. Wadi, chanka, moche, nazca, pacha, mama, quechua, aymara, imaina, yam, sumak, sumakta, aya, kuchana, viru, guanta, titi, kaha, Uru, Bamba, Kimwa, Takna, Kaha, Malka, Ata, Walpa, Waina, Kapak, Mama, Okyo, Manko, Kapak, Sumakta, Kausa, Kusum, Paya, Mama, Ita, Purin, Kinchu, Kapak, Raimi, Pusak, Sutaika, Benilda, Luis, Rojas, Wakpim, Pachapoyu, Kachkan, Inti, Mama Kia, Imai Nayam, Sky Waranka, Sky Chunka, Wenya Nai Kipa, Sunku Chukcha, Wakpim, Pachapoyu, Kachkan, Inti, Mama Kia, Imai Nayam, Sky Waranka, Sky Chunka, Wenya Nai Kipa, Sunku Chukcha, Riman Kichu, Manachu, Kechwa, Harawi, Harawi, Nyawi, Kimsa. Kashkani rakmi wari tai tai Sutai ka inka chuki chinchai Please don't ask me for a translation Cause I'm only reppin' first, first, first nation Please don't talk to me about decolonization When you still speaking in the colonizer's language See you genocide us, then you colonize us See you sterilize us, and now you fetishize us See you stigmatize us, then homogenize us Trying to co-op the movement and gentrify us I say no Land back, please. Stolen land under siege. Land back, land back, land back, please. Stolen land 